we are in the middle of our discussion of uh, some frequency generation and second harmonic generation. We have studied the basics, leaving out most of the mathematics and most of the physics. So, we are trying to develop a, a user's perspective of this rather complicated subject matter. Now, uh, today what we want to discuss is what are the issues that one needs to keep in mind when one wants to do some frequency generation or second harmonic generation not with regular continuous wave laser light, but with ultra fast pulses. After all the entire course is about ultra fast phenomena and uh, we need to be aware that it is important that we have to uh, take care of certain parameters if you want to do nonlinear uh, spectroscopy or even uh, any nonlinear optical process using ultra fast pulses. It is not as if you can take out a nonlinear crystal from anywhere say where your millennia is broken the continuous wave uh, diode pump solid state laser maybe you have a millennia that has gone bad you take out that uh, some frequency uh, well nonlinear optical crystal from there and you think that you are go going to use a femtosecond pulse using the same crystal it will not work. So, today we are going to learn why it will not work and what is it that we need to keep in mind if you are going to do second harmonic generation, some frequency generation so on and so forth using ultra short pulses. But before that let us uh, do a quick recap of what we have learnt already. We have learnt that this is the expression for the intensity of uh, second harmonic light. What are the factors there? Of course, the second order nonlinear susceptibility is one that should be as high as possible and as we have discussed uh, without proving anything that there should be no centrosymmetry if this is to be non-zero. If centrosymmetry is there then in fact this is 0 forget about having a high value. Secondly we said that it is better to have a large value of I0 provided I0 is not so large that uh, there is material damage in the crystal. And finally we worked with this term sin delta k l y 2 divided by delta k l y 2 whole square where l is the length of the crystal and delta k is the difference between the k vectors which boils down to difference in momenta of the combining uh, light right. And of course, since it is sin square theta by theta square it is going to have a maximum at uh, theta equal to 0. So, we have come back to this expression shortly. But what we said is that uh, first of all L is limited by coherence length. We achieve delta k equal to 0 by angle tuning we are going to expand we have discussed it and we will do a quick recap in the next slide. And uh, we talked some about the polarization of the second harmonic being perpendicular that, uh, to that of the fundamental. And again we are going to do a little more uh, detailed discussion about that. And this is what we had discussed in the previous module in uh, very great detail, but once again not uh, doing any real math. So, what we learned there is that there are two things that are important here. It is not only that the nonlinear optical crystal should have a high value of second order nonlinear susceptibility, but it should also be birefringent. What is the meaning of birefringence? The meaning of birefringence is that when light enters polarized light it should split into an ordinary ray or O ray with the same polarization and an extraordinary ray or E ray with perpendicular polarization. And the advantage of that is that you have crystals in which uh, this uh, refractive index for the ordinary and extraordinary rays are going to be different right. And they are going to be different not only for the fundamental but also for the second harmonic. So, we said that there are two kinds of crystals negative crystals for which N0 NO the refractive index for the ordinary day is greater than or equal to that of the extraordinary day and positive crystals in which refractive index of the ordinary day is less than equal to that of the extraordinary day. And the other thing that one needs to keep in mind is that for ordinary ray the refractive index is not dependent on the incident angle whereas, 
for the extraordinary ray the refractive index is dependent on the uh, incident angle. The polar plot for the refractive index of ordinary ray is going to be a circle and that for extraordinary ray is going to be an ellipse. So, for negative crystals this is what the picture is going to be the one drawn in black the circle solid circle is uh, the polar plot for ordinary ray the dashed ellipse is the polar plot for the extraordinary ray. So, extraordinary ray uh, polar plot is contained completely within the polar plot for the refractive index of ordinary ray. In positive crystals it is the other way round because here N o is less than equal to any whereas, here N o is greater than equal to any all right. And then we said that let us consider a situation where the refractive index is less for uh, the second harmonic compared to the uh, fundamental then you get a similar set of circle and ellipse for the second harmonic, but they are going to be smaller in size. And then since we have one we have an ellipse and we have a circle we see that in this particular angle of incidence the uh, circle for the second harmonic overlaps with the ellipse for the fundamental which means the refractive index of the extraordinary ray of the second harmonic is equal to the refractive index of the ordinary ray for the fundamental for that particular angle of incidence. And that is when the refractive indices are matched. So, phase matching is achieved the uh, conservation of momentum is assured and that is when you get second harmonic generation. Okay. So, this is what we had uh, discussed in the last module I thought we will just recap once again because it is not very easy at least for chem uh, us chemistry students to understand maybe. So, is there any question so far are you uh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they will not cross the, but uh, we are telling <laughs> huh, So, I think what he is saying is that if the refractive index is very, very small compared of for the uh, second harmonic compared to the ordinary ray, then maybe there will not be any overlap. If that is the case, there will not be any second harmonic generation. We will not get uh, second harmonic generation in that case. There has to be an overlap, otherwise, second harmonic generation is not going to happen. It is not enough to take a non centrosymmetric material. Just because your material is non centrosymmetric does not necessarily mean that it is going to be NLO active. Okay. So, in fact, very few uh, examples of materials are there where you are going to get second harmonic. That is why they are so expensive, they are not so easy to make as well. Okay. All right. And then uh, we said that it is possible. So, what are we doing? What happens when we uh, change the angle of the crystal? Essentially, it is difficult to change the angle of incidence because then the entire optical path will change. But if we rotate the crystal, then we essentially play around with the optic axis of the crystal and thereby change the angle of incidence without having to change the uh, direction of the light beam. Okay, that is a trick. So, angle tuning that is how it comes and we said that it is possible to have crystals that are not uniaxial, but generally nowadays uh, unless you have some very specialized application there are plenty of good uniaxial crystals positive or negative crystals which you could use. So, generally uh, one would use uniaxial crystal unless there is some compelling reason to not do so. And now, uh, I want to show you this table that you can actually find in Wikipedia. There are other ways of representing the same uh, thing, but I like this table particularly because it introduces the terms that we are going to use in the next module when we talk about optical parametric generation and amplification. It introduces the terms pump, signal and idler. And uh, well, uh, why pump, why signal, why idler the reason is historic they are used like that it is like SPDF orbitals why are they called SPDF and not ABCD. What is S what is P remember we are digressing a little bit 
sharp principal diffuse something like that right. So, those are ancient terms which people have completely forgotten the relevance of. So, here also more for historic reasons what we say is that this is basically a uh, three color process right. We are talking about some frequency generation special case of which is second harmonic generation right. So, we can say omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 right. So, what we are saying is the out of these three kinds of light the one with the smallest wavelength is called pump. The smallest wavelength is called lambda p, p for pump. The one with the largest wavelength, longest wavelength is called the idler. Okay. It has nothing to do with uh, laziness or activeness of the light, it is a name. What it means is idler means out of the three beams that are there, idler is the one with the longest wavelength that is uh, smallest, in, uh, smallest energy and the intermediate one is called lambda s, s for signal. Okay. So, please remember this highest energy is pump, intermediate energy signal, lowest energy idler okay. and also please do not miss the less than equal to signs. Sometimes it is possible that say idler and signal might have the same uh, values. In whatever we have discussed so far, it is uh, not very logical to say that pump and signal will have the same value, but idler and signal having same value we have encountered that already is not it. When, when does idler and signal have the same wavelength? In case of second harmonic generation lambda i equal to lambda s right. So, th that is all that it is. So, please remember this lambda p less than equal to lambda s less than equal to lambda i that is all. Now, the crystals are classified into type 1, type 2 sometimes uh, they are classified as type 3, type 4, type 5, type 6 and so on and so forth depending on the re relative polarizations of signal, idler and pump. In our case please do not forget so in the discussion so far pump is what is being produced okay, right. What is the meaning of pump in the discussion that we have had so far? Pump means some frequency or second harmonic right that is being produced. So, what this means is that if you have an a signal with uh, well 0 degrees polarization and idler with 0 degree polarization they are going to give you the uh, some frequency which will have polarization at 90 degrees. Okay. Uh, 0 and 90 are uh, written as O and E respectively. Okay. So, as far as some frequency or second harmonic generation is concerned, if you have uh, same uh, polarization of the combining light, the two combining lights degenerate or non-degenerate, non then we have already discussed the case where you are going to have uh, perpendicular polarization of the light coming out the some frequency or the second harmonic. So, that is called O O E kind of phase matching. Now, please do not get confused here the problem is since I have written pump first you have to read from right hand to side to left hand side opposite. So, type 1 phase matching is also called O O E phase matching meaning two light beams of 0 degree polarization are going to combine to give you some frequency of 90 degree polarization. Of course, you might as well call it E E O means the same. In fact, you see O O E is, is called type 1, E E O is also called type 1. Only if you want to differentiate between the uh, polarization of the incoming light, whether you want to specify that it is horizontal or it is vertical, then you call this type 1 and you call this type 8. Okay. And the discussion that we have had so far is actually of type 1 uh, phase matching right and will you agree with me if I say that uh, when we talk about uh, second harmonic generation then it is going to be type 1 
I will clarify the statement a little more a little uh, maybe expand the statement a little more uh, shortly, but in the discussion that we have had so far will you agree with me second harmonic generation unless you separate the beams rotate the polarization of one for some reason the light that goes on goes in it has the same polarization right. You are mixing uh, light with itself uh, the input light with itself. So, that is why if it is O then O O E is what you will get if it is E then E E O is what you will get, but there is another kind of polarization type 4 and type 5 type 5 is also called type 0 where you have E E E O O O that means there is no change in polarization when will that happen when will no change in polarization happen when a circle overlaps with a circle or rectangle overlaps with sorry not rectangle uh, ellipse overlaps with or ellipse right right or wrong why did we get o o e earlier because the refractive index the polar plot for refractive index of the O ray of the fundamental sorry E ray of the fundamental overlapped with the uh, polar plot of the O ray of the second harmonic. Okay. Now, relative sizes can be different right depending on which material it is depending on that it is possible that one rectangle uh, one uh, ellipse will cut another ellipse. Okay. Then you get E O kind of thing. And then if you mix two kind two different lights now if it is uh, two different rays it can be omega 1 plus omega 1, but suppose you have taken that light and uh, uh, you have rotated the polarization by 90 degrees and combining then you are going to have O E then if it is type 3 or 2 B you will get E polarization if it is type 6 or 2 B or 3 B you will get O polarization. Okay. So, there can be many combinations depending on what kind of uh, whether the crystal is positive or negative and uh, what kind of crystal it is. There is a compendium of uh, which crystal is of which type in this book that we are studying you can look it up, okay. but it is important to know this because uh, polarization does have an important role to play in any nonlinear optical application that you want to work with. Okay. Right. So, uh, these O E or E O E this you get for negative crystals and this are usually obtained for positive crystals. This way you can uh, look at uh, many different combinations. And now, let me show you some example. So, these are some examples K D star P what is that? What is K D P? What is K T P? Homework I will not tell you you have to find out. The only thing I will tell you is that star means it is deuterium instead of hydrogen, but please find out what is KDP, what is KTP, what is LBO, BBO perhaps you know beta barium borate, but you should know what this means and what is this LINBO3 lithium niobate right lithium niobate. So, these are all different kinds of face magic crystals last three are type 1 first two are type 2. Okay. These are examples there are other examples as well. Now, the question is uh, which of these will you use? Will you use uh, type 1 or type 2? As you see what some other parameters are there that become more important than type 1 or type 2 when we want to talk about uh, using ultra fast pulses. Okay. So, to understand that once again let us go back to this expression that we had written a little earlier. Which parts of these uh, this expression are going to be helped by ultra short pulses and which parts are uh, going to be made more difficult. First of all we all have we have discussed earlier that ultra short pulses have high intensity that is one feature. And second feature is that it has a, a spectral bandwidth. Yeah, spectral bandwidth. So is that good or is that bad? High intensity is good. 
is not it, because here you have this factor of I 0. So, laser pulse uh, if you use ultra short pulses then at least this I 0 square is going to be high anyway and we know why we have discussed that already. Now, spectral bandwidth is it good or is it bad? We are telling you it is bad. Why is it bad? What is the discussion we have had so far? We said remember the k vectors, yeah, this k is written here. So, the entire discussion was based on the fact that you have to have an exact phase matching that is delta k has to be equal to 0. Now, what do you have in a pulse, pulse light? Is it monochromatic? It is not. What does that mean? It has many colors, many different what we call plane waves. A plane wave is essentially a monochromatic waves, where uh, you have these parallel planes that uh, define uh, different uh, amplitudes, different phases. Okay. So, this is not a plane wave, we will discuss maybe in the next module what it is, but this is a problem how are we going to achieve delta k equal to 0 when there are so many k's? You get the problem? It is a problem. Okay. So, the problem is that you have to somehow achieve phase matching for the entire band, how will you do it? Well, uh, nature gives us uh, a way out fortunately. And from this expression can you tell me what the way out is? What is the natural way out? Natural that word is a hint. If I want to plot this function i 2 omega what will I get? Will I get a delta function? Then what is the factor that uh, yes what is the important factor in this discussion? sin square theta by theta square. So, that has some finite width is not it. Remember uh, in our uh, discussion of line width and all sin square theta by theta square is the minimum line width that has to be there even if you have two uh, specific states and that is what gives you natural line width to spectral lines. So, this is the plot really remember. So, the thing is this here at this point sin square theta by theta square equal to 0, but you do have a width all right. So, even this is not exactly uh, uh, 0. So, uh, if you consider the width of this function and all, it turns out that it is sufficient you can manage to get phase matching provided delta k into L is less than equal to 2.78. Okay. Uh, no, the, this 2.78 just comes from uh, you know numerical solution of this problem. I ca cannot write a formula and say that this is why it is 2.78, difficult to do that, right. But if you look at the pulses, it turns out that you are okay provided delta k into L is less than or equal to 2.78, okay. Now, what is the meaning of delta k once again? delta k means basically difference between the k vectors right. So, if you have many k vectors you will have several delta k values within this limit. So, here if you read this ancient paper you will see that uh, okay, what does each k characterize? It characterizes one particular uh, one particular plane wave right. Now, that particular plane wave is also characterized by a characteristic frequency. So, uh, what this paper does from 1968 is that it starts from this delta k dot L less than equal to 2.78 and works out the expression for delta nu. The nu is something that we understand better and nu is something that we work with a little better. right? So, we will not do the derivation, I will just show you the expression delta nu where delta nu is nu minus nu 0. What is nu 0? The central frequency. So, delta nu minus nu 0 is only half of the band. right? So, nu minus nu 0 has to be less than equal to 0 0.221 by L multiplied by 
lambda f d n d lambda f f stands for fundamental minus lambda second harmonic d n d lambda second harmonic reciprocal of that. What is d n d a lambda? What is n here? Refractive index right and we know that refractive index is a function of frequency. d n d lambda is the uh, rate of change of wavelength with respect to uh, sorry rate of change of refractive index with respect to wavelength that is all okay, gradient. Okay. So, uh, this is what it is. So, now from here if you know uh, which fundamental wavelength you are dealing with and d and d lambda for fundamental as well as second harmonic can be known experimentally from uh, for uh, the material and I hope you understand that d and d lambda for fundamental or d and d lambda of second harmonic is going to depend solely on the material that you are using. Okay. And it is not very difficult to work out you take thin slices of the material see how much of change in refractive index is there and you can work it out. So, from there for a 1 centimeter KDP crystal it turns out that delta nu is 20 centimeter inverse whereas, for 1 centimeter lithium niobate crystal delta nu is only 0.5 centimeter inverse, but then I cannot just stop here I have to say which wavelength it is it will depend on lambda uh, fundamental lambda second harmonic also. So, the wavelength that we are working with is 1064 nanometer. What is the claim to fame of 1064 nanometer? 1064 nanometer is a magic number what is it? Yes, is the fundamental emission of new NDA right the one of the most uh, popularly uh, widely used lasers 1064 nanometer uh, you will recognize the second harmonic better 532 nanometer. So, if I want to convert 1064 nanometer to uh, 532 nanometer which material would be better if I am using a pulse should it be KDP should it be lithium niobate. Let us uh, close this module on this note we will come back in the next module and we will discuss from this this point on.